There's another really interesting story about the old cement factory that you can hike down to. You kind of go up here by the North Stone building here, just past the office building, and by Cedars there and the tether ball, and you just go down the trail. Uh, you follow the power lines, you won't get lost if you'll follow those power lines back up the hill. Well, back in the early 1900s, just after the turn of the century, well, there was a fellow that decided that uh, he'd build a, get a cement factory going, and he thought it'd make a good business. So he went out trying to find investors. And when you go down there, you're going to find the remains of that old cement factory. And it's really interesting when you, when you go down there to see, see what it is. But he started rounding up these investors, and at that time there was a train that ran through here. It uh, ran from over in Missouri on out in, in towards uh, Anthony, Kansas here. So there was a place down here at the bottom, down just close to the cement factory down there, that was called Campbell's Crossing. And it was a little store, and it was a place where the trains would stop to take on uh, water and wood. And remember, those were mostly all steam engines at that time that burned wood. There weren't any coal burning ones over in here for you at that time very much, so they'd stop and they'd get uh, a supply of water in their water tank and they'd fill up with wood again. And the people could go in there and they could buy old soft drink like sarsaparilla or they could buy milk to drink or the cream or they could buy butter or there'd be candy in there. Oh, they'd even sell them a goat or a sheep or a cow, whatever the train had where they could uh, carry uh, whatever they'd let them take on the train, well, they'd, they'd let them buy there. And it was kind of a refreshing place for people. Well, that's where the train would come and bring these uh, possible investors. And this, this fellow advertised all over the United States. He put it in every paper that he could about getting people to invest, and, and people would ride the train in here. And, of course, that was the main means of transportation in the early 1900s was the train. Well, whenever, uh, whenever an investor would come, well, this fellow would meet him with a horse drawn Surrey with the fringe on top. Remember how that song goes out of Oklahoma, uh, the play, the musical of Oklahoma? Well, he'd have this nice team of horses, and he'd built a small hotel, and he'd take them up there, and he'd give them a room, and they'd feed them their meals, and they could stay overnight, and he'd have uh, flowers there, and he'd have candy, and he'd have champagne. Well, we know there wasn't any Methodist investors that drank the champagne. It was probably the Baptists or somebody like that that drank the champagne. But he'd wine them and dine them and, and try to get them to invest. And so whenever a, a, an investor would come in, well, he'd have, he'd have a, a bunch of people rounded up to work, and, and they'd be out there. He did, oh, maybe 50, 60 men. One load goes into Ark City, one over to Burton, two to Winfield, three down to Ponca City. We'll put six on the train, go to Wichita. Well, they'd just be working and making cement. And uh, then, uh, then uh, these investors would be impressed. Well, when you go down there now, you're going to find there's a very long wall. It's probably about 12 feet high. It's probably, oh, more than 100 feet long. And that big old wall. Now, remember, this was done in almost 90 years ago. So that cement, you hardly find a crack in it. These, then you'll find some places where just wide enough for a horse-drawn wagon to pull in between there to get rock and to get cement dumped into it. Then there's a, a building down there that's about, uh, oh, almost 20 feet high. It's about 60 feet square, and there are no doors or windows in it, and the roof's not on it, but the only way to get into it, there's kind of a tunnel that goes underground, and you have to jump down in there. It's about eight feet down into there. Uh, my advice to you, the only time you really ought to go down in there, into that tunnel, go underneath and look up inside that building, is when it's cold weather, like, oh, December, January, February, because there aren't any snakes out there. There's a lot of snakes down in that bottom. So if you jump down in there, probably you'd become a high jumper, you, at least eight feet, and if that's the case, you ought to go ahead and try out for the, the next year's Olympics. But there's that building. There are several other buildings that you see the foundations for big, huge buildings. 50 feet by 60 feet, 30 feet by 60. Then there's a big old office building that they built down there. And uh, it was about 80 feet long, uh, about uh, 24 feet wide. And that was used kind of as a mess hall, a dining area, as well as office. And uh, if you uh, look over on our bulletin board over here, you'll find that a picture out of the Ark City Traveler of uh, oh, several years back. Well, the biggest picture shows you the main part of that. It shows you the rock crusher in the center. It shows you the office building over to the right. 
And if you look back in the background, the upper left part, you'll see where we have now the cross up at Inspiration Point. And just at the left edge of that big picture is about where we are right now in the dining hall, where the present dining hall is. And then if you look at a couple of other smaller pictures that are on the left side of that, you'll find a picture of that wall I was talking about, some of the other buildings. So you may want to take a look at, at those over there. Now remember that office building because that's an important thing when I tell you another story about how the dining lodge was built and how a man by the name of John Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, built the dining lodge. But that's important to, to remember that, that old uh, office building there. Well, this uh, man kept bringing in investors for several different, for several years. And he advertised even worldwide. And so one, one time uh, uh, there was a man who came from Berlin, Germany. And he got on a ship uh, and came across the Atlantic Ocean, got into New York, rode the trains out here, got on the little train, rode out here. He was interested in maybe investing in, in this. Sounded like a good deal. Well, well, sure enough, that day when he came, he was met with the horse-drawn surrey at the fringe on top, taken up to the hotel. He was, he was given food to drink, uh, food and drink to eat and drink. And then he went to, out and took the turn, sure enough, here are all these people working. One load goes over to, to Dexter, one to Maple City, one, uh, let's take three to Ark City today. We'll uh, mix up a big batch so we can send it uh, to Wichita on the train. Well, then, and then they were crushing rock and all kinds of things. Well, he stayed overnight, looked at it again the next morning, got on the train that was going east, and he rode out of town. Well, everybody went home. Well, the old German, he got over someplace over towards St. Louis, and he said, I want to go take another look. I have some more questions. We got on the train, came back, came back uh, two days later, and came out to there was nobody here. He looked around, and he said, hmm, I think there's something wrong with the sauerkraut. Well, he went on into town, went to the sheriff's office, because he thought something was kind of bad out here. He, he said, well, he said, thank you. Maybe I got taken. He reported to the sheriff. Well, there was somebody in the sheriff's office. Now, I know we don't have any law enforcement offices like this, but they went over and told the guy that had been getting investors, uh, hey, the old German's blown the whistle on you. Well, that, that man, he went to the home national bank, withdrew all the money. No one knows exactly how much. And he took off and headed west. Well, you see, it was kind of what we call today a scam. So I'm a little bit leery when somebody, somebody comes by and says, Morris, uh, you know, I've got something I think you might be interested in investing in. Well, I'm a little leery. Well, this fellow, he took on and he took off towards the west. He kept going west and he got out by a little town. Uh, let's see, what was the name of that town? He bought a lot of land around it, that money. Oh yeah, the name of that town was Los Angeles. And that was back in the early 1900s. Well, you can imagine, the story is that he became a multimillionaire many times over. Now, I'm not going to tell you the name of the, the man, because uh, some of the family members still live around here, and, and uh, uh, it might embarrass him a little bit. But that, uh, that much you know about the old cement factory, it's worthwhile going down to see. Now, remember, it's, it's pretty good height. Uh, down, it's not too bad going down, but you've got to climb back up that hill coming back up. But, Enjoy yourself. Remember to follow the power lines.